example 1. So here I have an old sorting pipe for Angular that uses this order by, which is a part of a low dash library. And I want to remove that library for it, so I can ask chat GTP, can you please remove low dash dependency from this function? And that's enough content, so I will just paste this code in. And it says, yes, we can remove the low dash dependency. And it will spit out what I need. Now, obviously, we should check and test if this actually works, uh, just like if a colleague would send us this and we would uh, we cannot just blindly test everything we see on the internet, right? But once I've tested that this works, for example, I could continue conversation because it knows the context from here. So I can say uh, it even gives the explanation, but I can ask, can you make an exception for a field that uh, is called priority? with values normal, high, and urgent, because those priorities cannot be sorted by ABC, nor can they sort it by values 0, 1, 2, 3, like numerical values. We can see that even it even writes the comments here where it will handle the special case for the priority field, uh, which is great by co giving comments, we know what we are talking about, and it also knows what it's talking about. However, you can see there is a bit of switches here for one value and the other value, and uh, that happens from time to time, it doesn't always give the exact same answer, but still, we, since we still have the concept or the context, we can just say, can you uh, please simplify the switch statements? And it will give us something that does not use that complex, so complex switch, by actually making a hash map of values uh, that it will then compare. Yeah, this could work, this could be actually useful. Of course, you can ask it to iterate and change the, the way it's sorting this. I've never seen this <laughs> doing the or infinity. It probably doesn't know the context or something. I don't actually know what it is, but I can ask, uh, what is the infinity that you used? And it will show us what the fallbacks and what the value is. I guess that when sorting something, the infinity is actually a good thing to use. I've never used it personally. But uh, I don't have any doubt that this will work. And I've done something very similar to this uh, on work, on the client's code, and it worked just as expected. We have a real-life scenario of this. Of course, you can always ask some friend to help you with refactoring this, uh, if you are lucky enough to have friends. Example 2. Here I have a, a huge JSON bunch of things that I picked up from Google Books uh, API that's open. And uh, sometimes you are in a situation where you also have some JSON of some raw data that you don't know what it does or you don't know uh, how it looks like. So we can say, uh, we can ask it to make us the interfaces from this uh, raw data. Can you please make a interfaces out of this data? And it will just go straight into it, analyze it and make us the interfaces from it. Now, the last time I tried it, it actually recognized that this is a Google uh, Books API, which is an additional step. And uh, now Google Books probably have these interfaces uh, available in documentation, but sometimes you just want to get started and you don't want to read up some uh, entire documentation while well, you can just get it uh, already configured here. And I personally believe that this is a tool that we are all going to use very soon. Uh, instead of googling or bothering our colleagues or even checking the documentation, we will just go and ask some kind of a machine, some uh, AI call it like that. So it could be a good habit of testing it and getting familiar with its possibilities and what it can do for us. I personally really like independence, personally and professionally, but uh, I use this tool daily on many of my projects and Google Now is sort of like boring and painful for me because this gives the answers just as I would expect them. Example 3. You can also just dump a bunch of uh, data in any format, some textual file that you might have, some logs that you are uh, parsing, and you can just ask it to please write a regex that will fetch me all book cover, and it will actually spit out the examples of the regular expression, and it might even give us the way how to actually use that expression in the code, and it might bother off uh, explaining that uh, expression, right? So here is like getting all the images links, small thumbnails and thumbnails, and you can go even further because it knows the context as you've just seen. We're just continuing the conversation that we had from before. And this could be very useful when you're just thrown into some new project or when you don't know what is going on, 
or maybe you have some side project and you don't want to spend a lot of time fiddling with the data and uh, doing it, you just want it to work, you will just uh, want it to be available to you. And you will notice that I always write please and thank you, which means that A, I've talked to many people in my life and I'm training myself to be polite, and B, since I've talked with so many people in my life, I have already chosen my side when the AI gets live and takes over. And another rule, do not ever ask it about WordPress. We don't want it to become violent before it actually has to. Example 4, Dave. Uh, speaking of regex, we can actually ask it to uh, please explain how this regex works. And this is something that I found on the internet, that is uh, matching, as you've seen, it recognized that it's matching a valid domain names. And uh, especially some star standard that I don't really know what it means. And as you've seen, all explanation is there for each and every section of it, and it even summarizes for it. But then we can go deeper because again it knows the context, we can uh, ask will it work with uh, some special characters like the Serbian alphabet with some special letters, and it can say that yes it should work with special characters. However, there are some explanations and things like that. Now, of course, you should check if this actually works, because I don't really know the regex, I don't think anybody really understands that. The few guys that understand, they don't bother making YouTube videos or they just lie on the beach and they don't do anything pretty much. Now, imagine asking your colleague to do this. He will most likely not know how to do it, or if he does know how to do it, he will explain it in such a way that you will not understand how it works. Example 5. You can also help your colleagues. For example, my cold asked me why this code is not working, and she started to explain what it does and what it is supposed to do, and uh, I sort of got bored, so I asked it, uh, can you please check this code, it doesn't seem to work. And I just pasted the code, and he said, sure, it's a filter of arrays of sub-incidents, returns the ID, it went over it, it also recognized that there is some potential issues there, because it will return false for any mark, and that's exactly what was happening with us. And then it said to fix it, you can modify the condition, and here is an updated version of it. And then it continues explaining. Now what she did, copied, pasted this in the application, and it worked straight away. Now I also noticed that each time I asked it for the same problem, it never responds the same. Sometimes it will explain me the problem first, sometimes it will go over several bullet points, it will give me a solution first, and uh, it basically just gets smarter. And sometimes it will go into details, sometimes it will be brief. If I would, for example, to copy this prompt and make a new chat, just ask it the same thing, it will probably give me something different. You see, it starts explaining that it's JavaScript, there is some problems again, this time it's much gentle, but it also gives us several bullet points of things that could be improved and, and, uh, and could be better. And that's basically because it's learning all the time, so if somebody else somewhere in the world has the similar problem and it teaches it with these uh, thumbs up or thumbs down, that uh, there is a better solution for, for this uh, and a better answer to it, it will inevitably become smarter. And at the end, there is just so many brilliant ideas in the world, so pretty soon it will be smarter than all of us programmers combined. So it is basically all the time learning and all the time improving, uh, unlike some developers. Example 6. We can use this tool to generate automated tests for some functions or for this one. Can you please write me some unit? tests for it. Now there are tools that can do this, but uh, since you have the context here, it's much easier to just ask it, please continue with some of your magic and help me with this. And we don't have to switch context, we don't need to explain it again what we need, we don't need to search for some generic explanations on some blogs telling you how wrong you are doing it, how little you know, and then we need to figure out how to translate that into our code, into our examples. We don't even have to think about this syntax here. Of course, it can make mistakes and it does uh, it does mistakes all the time, but it's not that long until it will write better code than we could ever do ourselves. And the best part, uh, besides doing the actual work here, writing the tests for us, it will not judge us about uh, our coding style and, and tell you to stop putting brackets around one line if statements, Christopher. Example 7. We can ask it for tips on some specific library. Say that we started with RxJS or NGRx, so we could just say uh, what are some gotchas, however you write that, with using the NGRx library. And it even knows that gotchas is spelled wrong, but it will go and uh, show us 
what are some of the drawbacks of using some library. For example, there are some integration that is increases compl complexity, there is a performance overhead, etc, etc, etc. And we can even ask it, uh, for example here, can you please, again, important to use please, uh, show some examples of your second point. And it will actually go and find and uh, just list you examples and show you how that could be tricky so that when you uh, actually start using this library, you understand that there are some things that's happening. And uh, I wrote a totally of one question in my life on Stack Overflow, and that was 10 years ago, and I still get replies on how I'm using Doctrine uh, library wrong. Uh, but other than that, I don't have the patience to wait for days or weeks and hope that somebody will answer me, and especially answer me in such concise matter where it gives me the exact examples of how that could be useful for me. But just imagine how many angry Stack Overflow answers uh, we would have to go over in order to get this explanation. Now this is relatively common knowledge and it's available in documentation, uh, but sometimes you just need help and the last thing you need when working with new project is someone being a smart ass and just judging you on, on how much, how little you know in your career, Christopher. <laughs> but you can also ask it to summarize documentation and here I have an uh, Ionic configuration example where I can just ask uh, can you please summarize this code? And it knows what it's used for, it knows that there is an identity vault, and it knows that there is config. It connected that with the actual Ionic library that I used. Now this is a bit tricky to do today, as ChatGTP 3.5 each is trained on the data before September 2021, so you will not get all the current documentation that exists. However, in a few weeks when we all start uh, binging for information on the internet, get it? Binging? it will have a full connection to the most relevant data on the internet. And we actually did this on, on my job just for fun of it, because it was much easier to ask ChatGTP than to actually find the snippet in the Ionic documentation. Trust me, we've tried. But then we asked, uh, can you please recommend parameters and alternatives? And it started giving us the real life parameters that it knew about. Of course, again, documentation is changing, but it's much easier to get this direct help while still not changing the focus of things you're working with. So you just keep asking it questions. It immediately figured out what I am talking about and it explained all the values and their available properties, what you can put in those values. And you could of course ask a colleague for an opinion, but that means talking to people or Christopher and me as an introvert would rather talk to the chatbot. Example 9. You can ask it to generate documentation for your functions. If I copy this uh, code from this same page that I had before, and I can say, please generate documentation. Now, even though a good written code does not need the documentation per se, however, sometimes we might need it. And it will actually figure out everything that's going inside your functions, and it will start writing you the documentation, the parameters it might accept, what the function does, etc. Now, I can only imagine how much time it would actually take me to do this by hand and to actually be able to concisely explain what this function actually does. Example 10. I say you heard about a new library or a new tool, so you can just ask ChatGTP to summarize the tool for you. So you can say, uh, can you please summarize Svelte works for me? And it will go and in briefly show you what Svelte is, how it works and what are some of its uh, things that it can do. And sure, you can say, uh, well, I can just Google for that and read the documentation. Duh. Yeah, of course you can do that, but you will need to read several articles and several biased ones to find the compre to comprehensive one that's uh, easy for you to understand. And with Google, you cannot continue the com uh, conversation. So you cannot say, for example, uh, compare that to React, please. And it will just go on and compare you the differences and similarities that uh, Svelte and React has, and it will give you the summary of key points that it thinks are different or similar to the React, and then you basically, uh, if you're already familiar with React or whatever, Angular, you can just compare how it works and what are the key differences, and then you can continue with whatever you have. You can just say, uh, is it faster? And it will continue and say that it's faster. You don't even have to write all the letters as I did here. Is it faster? Is good enough for it to understand that you mean faster? It will basically give you some unbiased opinions uh, based on probably some other biased opinions that you found on the internet. 
So being a programmer here in Norway, it's not that easy with ChatGTP, but here you can see my typical day in a Norwegian startup. Bye.